Today I'm going to change the wheels on this Model X, and if I can do it, you can do it. So today I've got my good friend Dave with me, guiding me through the process. You might remember Dave from my very first YouTube video we shot, edited, and posted this video in one day back in 2009 to help promote, I think it was our third Movember campaign. The rest, as they say, is history. So Dave is back with me today, guiding me through my very first wheel changeover. Now the first thing you want to get in order to do this job is a set of these jack pads. I will leave a link to the set that I got in the description of the video. The next thing you'll need is a low profile service jack. I got a three ton jack. It could lift my entire Model X into the air and you really only need to lift one corner in the air at a time. So it's probably a bit more than I need, but you can never be too safe. Now all Tesla models have four lift points. You will find them right behind the front wheels and right in front of the back wheels. So what you want to do is you want to take one of your lift pucks and stick it right in the middle hole there. That little rubber ring will help to hold the puck in place while you're working. So it's time to assemble our jack and uh, it was a pretty simple job but I got to tell you this this thing is heavy. Now this round part in front of the lift arm is called the saddle and you want the saddle to be just a little bigger than your lift pad. So this size was perfect. Now before you attempt to jack your car up you'll want to put your parking brake on. And you can do that by depressing and holding the button at the end of your gear selector. You'll know the parking brake is on when you see this icon lit up. Now on a Tesla Model X or a Model S, you will want to engage jack mode. We used to find jack mode under suspension, but you'll notice it's not there anymore. Now you'll find it under service. If we click on service, You'll see jack mode up here. Activate jack mode and your car will not try to auto level while you're jacking it up. So the next thing you'll want to do is remove your lug nut covers. I use this handy dandy tool that I got with a set of Tesla wheel caps that I ordered from Amazon and it really helps make this job quick and easy. So there you go. With the lug nut caps removed, we're ready to take this bad boy off. And to do that, you will need a 21 millimeter impact socket. So we tried taking these lug nuts off with the impact driver because, well, impact drivers are fun and cool. But the problem with impact drivers is by the time they break that nut, which is fancy talk for loosening it, they will basically zip it right off or at least loosen it far too much. So that's why a dedicated breaker bar like this is a far better tool for the job. A breaker bar will just loosen a lug nut by a quarter okay, or so a half turn. I weigh 120 pounds. All right. So this is my only Now Dave likes to break all of the lug nuts from all of the wheels while the car is still on the ground. And that makes a lot of sense from an efficiency perspective, but I wouldn't recommend doing that if you don't have a breaker bar. You certainly wouldn't want to zip all of those lug nuts off with an impact driver because the wheels could then be too loose. So now that we have all the lug nuts broken, we can now jack the car up to change out our first wheel. You just take a moment to line up that saddle with the jack pad and once you have a connection, you can then jack the car up. Dave absolutely loved this low profile jack. He kept commenting on how it only took about three pumps to get the wheel off the ground.
Now we can do our Finally, yeah. time to use the impact driver. So it's time to discuss the you star like pattern. Now you probably don't need to use the star pattern when you're removing the lug nuts, but it's a really important pattern to learn and to use when you're putting the lug nuts back on and especially when you're torquing them. So here are the winter tires that we will be putting back onto the car. And in a few moments, you'll come to learn why it's important to examine the tread and the sidewalls of the tire before determining what side of the car you put the tires on. This is, notice the arrow. This goes on the right. So this has to go this way to get the direction the proper way. This is the rotation direction. That's right. These tires can only go on the right side of the car. You'll notice some arrows pointing in the direction that the tire should be moving when it's rolling forward. And here's why. Snow tires move through a lot of snow and slush, so they have these deep channels in them that allows the snow and slush to get ejected from the side of the tire, as long as the middle part of the channel squeezes the snow first. Now, if the tires were put on backwards, the outside of the channel would contact the snow and the slush first and force the snow and slush towards the middle of the tire. The snow and slush would have no place to go, and so it would quickly fill up these channels with snow and slush, greatly reducing the traction of the tire. So that wheel goes back to the other side of the car, and this wheel comes off. Now Dave likes to take a little time to clean up the inside of the wheel as well as the wheel assembly. And for good reason. After an entire season, a wheel can get seized to a wheel hub assembly. In fact, a few days later when I was helping my friend Michael change his rims, we needed to use a sledgehammer to knock his summer rims off of the wheel hub assembly. So it's worth your while to take a wire brush to your wheel hub assembly and to the inside of your wheels. So let's take a moment to talk about two different types of wheels, lug-centric and hub-centric. The difference is really all about fit. Now this part of the wheel hub assembly is called the hub or the hub flange, and the five bolts sticking out of the hub assembly are called lugs. Now, not all wheels will fit that center hub flange perfectly. If they do, then you've got what you would call a hub-centric wheel. But if the wheel leaves a gap around that hub flange, then you've got what you would call a lug-centric wheel. If that is the case, then the lug nuts bear the entire weight of the vehicle. Given that Teslas are so heavy, Teslas cannot make use of lug-centric wheels. Now you can see here, when we put this wheel on, it fits over the hub flange perfectly. See that that fits exactly. So the hub flange and the lugs will all bear the weight of the vehicle. You can contrast that with my friend Michael's very popular steel rims here. Because those rims are made to fit a whole bunch of different vehicles, they're oversized, and you can see a very clear gap here between the wheel and the hub flange. That makes these wheels lug-centric. Back to the Tesla, we're about to bolt on our first winter rim. These wheels are rather unique in that they don't have a very large area for the lug nuts, and so I need special lug nuts that require a special adapter. Now, when tightening these lug nuts on, it's very critical that we utilize our star pattern. So let's go over that. We're going to pick any lug nut to start on. But from that point forward, we're going to go across, and then across from that, across from that one, and down and across, and then back to where we started. And you'll likely go over each lug nut again to check to make sure that you tightened it properly. 
Now, it is really handy to have an impact driver for this part of the process, but it's a good idea to not have that impact driver set at its highest setting because you really don't want to over tighten these lug nuts. So setting one or two is probably more than enough. That's because we want to use our torque wrench to set the torque of these lug nuts perfectly. Now some automobile manufacturers will put their torque information on the inside door frame of the car, but not in this case. For Tesla, what you'll want to do is go into your owner's manual, which you will find under the service area, and you could scroll around looking for it if you wanted to, but I'm going to suggest you just enter in the word wheels and then click on wheels and soon enough you will find the information you were looking for and here it is 129 foot-pounds of torque that seems to be the torque for all Teslas at least that's the torque for both our Model X and our Model 3 now, setting the torque for your torque wrench can be a bit of tricky business. That is, especially if you don't have very good eyesight. Both Dave and I independently made the same mistake, and that is that we aimed right for the number 120 when setting our torque, just like this red line would show you. But if you look closely, let's say we're aiming for 150 here, you wouldn't wind up right beside 150 you can see here how the line jogs down as it approaches the center line. So you have to bear that in mind. So let's look at exactly how we would set up our torque for a Tesla. Now we're aiming for 129 foot-pounds of torque. So we will wind the handle to the right until we hit 120 foot-pounds. After that point, we'll wind the handle to the right once again just to add on the additional nine pounds. And that's how you torque a Tesla. So now that we've set our torque, let's see how you go about actually torquing the lug nuts. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that your ratchet is set to tighten. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have lowered your car. Lower, then torque. Yes, you have to lower that wheel before you torque it because if you go to torque it without the wheel on the ground, then there will be no resistance against your torque wrench as you go to tighten the lug nuts. So we're just going to very slowly turn the handle of this low profile jack to gently lower the wheel down onto the floor. You don't necessarily want to lower the car all the way down here, just enough so that the tire is touching the ground. Now our wheel is ready to be torqued. Now listen to this. That's the sound you're looking That's for. That's it? That's it. That's the sound, huh? Yeah. All right. Put it on. That's it. That's it. One, one click. click. Yep. So you know well, it, it is like you're putting your weight tight, on it. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, we're following the standard star pattern as we torque these lug nuts. And then we're going to go over each lug nut one more time just to make sure that we have torqued each and every one. Now that the lug nuts have all been torqued, we can safely lower that wheel all the way down. Now it's time to line up for the second wheel. Now I should take this opportunity to point out that although I did not use a set of wheel blocks or what is often called wheel chocks, it's never a bad idea, especially if you're working on a sloped piece of ground. Yes, yeah, setting number two is just fine for putting your lug nuts back on. As a matter of fact, setting number one would be even better. Setting number three is the more powerful setting that you would want to use to break the lug nuts loose if you don't have a dedicated breaker bar. Just remember that the problem with using an impact driver to loosen the lug nuts is that you really don't have control over how much you loosen them. 
There's no doubt though that an impact driver is a great big time saver when it comes to putting the lug nuts back on. We'll lower this wheel just a little bit so that we can torque it. Contacts a bit more. And then I turn it clockwise again to stop it. Yep. And with our second wheel being done, we're ready to move on to the other side of the car. After having gone through the process twice on the other side of the car, Dave let me handle this side by myself and just supervised to make sure I didn't forget about any of the important steps. And I have to say, without having to stop and worry about filming every little step, this side of the car went a lot faster. So an important point to note regarding care and maintenance for your torque wrench is to loosen that torque wrench back down to whatever pressure is prescribed by the manufacturer once you're done using it. In my case, the manufacturer suggests setting it all the way back down to zero foot-pounds of torque. One other thing I wouldn't want you to forget is to remove those jack pads from the car so you don't end up losing them as you drive along the road. Remember that these jack pads come in a handy dandy carrying case, so it's probably a good idea to keep that carrying case in your car. Hey, speaking of tools, can you believe that after helping me out all afternoon, my friend Dave gifted me my very first impact socket set? What an absolute prince of a man. So there you go. I changed my very first set of winter rims. And not only did I save the money that it takes to hire somebody to change my rims, I also saved a lot of time, believe it or not, because it takes a fair amount of time to pack up my wheels, drive to the tire shop, wait for the job to get done, drive back home, and then unpack the wheels again. And given that we have two cars, the savings in terms of both time and money can be multiplied by two. Moreover, I think it's just a good idea to know how to do things yourself. After all, that's just part of the adventure.